On the 11th of March 2011, a huge earthquake off Tohoku caused a tsunami that hit the Pacific coast of Japan. The nuclear power plant complex at Fukushima Daiichi was badly hit. Cooling pumps failed and three reactors suffered core meltdown in the worst nuclear accident since that at Chernobyl in 1986. Considerable quantities of radioactive material were released into the surrounding area. For the people of this area, the clock stopped on the day of the earthquake. The people of the affected area either don't live there or can't live there. Out of 71,000 population, 60,000 were forced to evacuate because of the nuclear power accident. Nowadays, there are still 25,000 people living outside of this area. Shortly after the Fukushima Daiichi accident, the United Nations Scientific Committee on the Effects of Atomic Radiation, UNSCEAR, agreed to produce an authoritative and independent report on the accident's impact. UNSCEAR's chair is Carl Magnus Larsen. When I visited Fukushima, I could of course see clear evidence of this triple tragedy. People have been uprooted, they have lost their livelihood, they have lost relatives, uh, their children have lost their friends. They now are displaced, they live in places uh, that are different from where they come from. Unskir was established in 1955 to undertake reviews of the sources of ionizing radiation and the effects on human health and the environment. Its report on Fukushima Daiichi draws on information from Japan itself, together with data supplied by United Nations member states and a number of international organizations, including the Preparatory Commission for the Comprehensive Nuclear Test Ban Treaty Organization, the Food and Agriculture Organization, the World Health Organization, the International Atomic Energy Agency and the World Meteorological Organization. I was very frightened but didn't know what to do because it was a big tremor. The ground was shaking a lot. While watching TV the next day, I remember the nuclear power plant exploded. The UNSCEAR report draws on the work of over 80 experts from 18 countries and is the product of more than three years' work. It underwent a review process involving 120 experts representing 27 UN member states. This report is an honest attempt by scientists who are among the best in the world in this particular field to assess objectively the levels of ionizing radiation exposure from the Fukushima accident and uh, the implications of that for health and the environment. The UNSCEAR report focuses on the measurements of radiation and radioactivity, the release and dispersion of radioactive material, particularly iodine-131 and cesium-134 and 137, the exposure of the general public, the exposure of workers at the nuclear power plant and the exposure of plants and animals. Radiation is a form of energy transmitted through air. Some radiation types can penetrate material and cause a process called ionization. Radioactive materials produce such ionizing radiation. Ionizing radiation can damage the chemical structure of biological material, like the cells that make up human organs and tissues. It can affect DNA, which in turn can lead to cancer. The important issue is the level of the dose of radiation. It can be measured in a unit called the millisievert. This unit, one thousandth of a sievert, is a widely accepted measure belonging to the same family as litres and kilograms. We are all exposed to ionizing radiation every day from naturally occurring radioactive sources. As a consequence of the accident, the additional exposures received by most Japanese people in the first and subsequent years since the accident will be less than this background. 
Indeed, the lifetime dose from the accident for most people is far below the background figure. Unskier used two different methods to reach a good working understanding of the magnitude, composition and timing of radioactive releases into the air and sea around the nuclear power plant. Based on that understanding, the committee then turned to the radiation exposure of the public in the affected areas and some adjacent areas, with particular reference to radioactive cesium and iodine. It concluded... The doses delivered for the most significant radionuclides were quite different. Average doses to the thyroid, mainly from iodine-131, ranged up to several tens of millisieverts and were delivered in the first month or so. Average whole body or effective doses, mainly from cesium-134 and cesium-137, ranged up to 10 millisieverts. Cesium persists in the environment. From this, the committee concluded that... Because the exposure of the Japanese general public was low, so too were the risks to health later in life. Specifically, it has concluded that... No discernible changes in future cancer rates and hereditary diseases are expected due to this exposure, and that no increases in the incidence of spontaneous abortion, miscarriages, stillbirths, congenital defects or cognitive impairment are expected. The report was chaired by Wolfgang Weiss. There's a baseline of cancer which is very high, which is very variable in the country, and that the additional risk on top of this baseline, which is variable, is so small that we cannot detect it. Because the evacuation was carried out promptly, the potential impact on cancer rates was significantly averted. Had the local authorities delayed evacuating the affected area, the radiation exposure of the population might have been ten times higher. After the Fukushima accident, the Japanese uh, radiation protection experts had the chance to evacuate people from the most uh, potentially uh, vulnerable areas. And they did that properly and timely and they actually saved these people from unnecessary radiation exposure. That said, the committee considered that there is a theoretical possibility for infants and children of an increased risk of thyroid cancer and that the situation should be monitored closely. Overall, though, it believes that even among the children most exposed, the risk remains low. In June 2011, the Fukushima Health Management Survey was initiated. For the next 30 years, it will cover all of the more than 2 million people living in Fukushima Prefecture at the time of the earthquake and reactor accident. It includes a thyroid ultrasound survey of 360,000 children aged up to 18 years at the time of the accident using technology which increases the ability to detect small abnormalities. As well as a study of the likely effect of radiation on the population in general, Unskia has worked on an independent assessment of the radiation doses received by more than 25,000 people involved in mitigation work at the Fukushima Daiichi plant. The committee analysed reported worker doses and also independently assessed doses for some of the workers. Its assessments are broadly consistent with the reported doses, but uncertainties remain for exposures during the early phase of the accident. Accordingly, the committee concluded that Any increased risk of cancer in this group is expected to be indiscernible. But workers exposed to doses above 100 millisieverts will be specifically examined, including through annual examinations of the thyroid, stomach, large intestine and lungs for potential late radiation-related health effects. The committee also examined the risk posed to human health by radionuclides entering the food chain through the consumption of plants and animals. What the report says about the impact of, of the foodstuffs is that 
the uh, restrictions that were put in place by the Japanese authorities meant that generally the levels of radioactivity that was found in food were low and that the impact was low. Alongside the impact of radiation on human health, the committee examined its effects on both terrestrial and marine ecosystems. For the latter, the possibility of effects on flora and fauna was limited to the shoreline area adjacent to the power station. The committee concluded that Exposures of both marine and terrestrial non-human biota following the accident were in general too low for acute effects to be observed, though there might have been some exception because of local variability. While the impact of radiation on human health and the environment is considered low, the impact of the evacuation continues to be felt. Katsutoshi Furuchi is an evacuee in this temporary housing. The home to which he longs to return is in an area affected by radiation. This is the second summer we're spending in temporary housing and I want to go back home as soon as possible. Not only me, but everyone living here has the same thoughts about this. Evacuated to safety by her 70-year-old daughter, now Nakai is 91. She regularly attends these social gatherings at a day centre for the elderly. She found living away from her home extremely stressful and has now returned. The authorities have reopened residential areas where radiation has fallen and where homes have been decontaminated. Generally, the people of the affected areas welcome the findings of the UNSCARE report. Of course my teachers should go through the report in order to understand the worldwide position. I definitely would read the report. Dr. Arinobu Hori is a psychologist on secondment to support the people of the prefecture. Because it's an unprecedented catastrophe, it is worthwhile that international scientists who are reliable and credible are making this report. It's important that this report is discussed and scrutinised by many scientists. In conclusion, the report's findings can be summarised as... For the people affected by the accident, the cancer rate is expected to remain stable. There is a theoretical increased risk of thyroid cancer among children most exposed. No impact on birth and hereditary effects are expected. No discernible increase in cancer rates among workers are expected. Any impact on wildlife would have been transient and localised. This is not the end of the road. No doubt there's more information that will become available in the coming years which the scientific community and the committee will follow with interest. However, the report is an important benchmark right now that we hope will be of use both to the scientific community and, of course, to the people of Japan. Thank you.